Thank you for the kind introduction. Thank you for inviting me to this amazing event to present our work in ancestry and cancer. How do I start advancing the slides? There's an arrow here going. Thank you. I have nothing to disclose. So patients with different race and ethnicity inherit different germline alleles and encounter different environmental exposures that can result in a disproportionate burden of um, specific molecular phenotypes. And somatic differences between populations have been observed in many cancers. Some notable examples include um, the enrichment of um, the MIG amplification in African-American prostate, prostate cancers that has been associated with worse outcome, and the enrichment of uh, EGFR mutations in East Asian lung cancer patients that is uh, more common in uh, never smokers. However, very limited number of patients from non-European populations have been sequenced in the research setting, and the lack of knowledge about somatic differences between populations has been a major barrier um, to implement, implementing precision medicine for the underserved populations. Race and ethnicity-based disparities in cancer outcomes remains a long-standing challenge, and the complex relationship between genetic ancestry, somatic alterations, and outcome is still poorly understood. It's important to note that social determinants play a major role. For example, patients from the underserved populations are less likely to be tested for actionable mutations, and they are very underrepresented in most drug development and biomarker discovery efforts. In MSKCC, this is based on the impact cohort, we observed a significant worse outcome in um, in the black patients compared to their white counterparts in a pan-cancer analysis of adjusting for cancer types. This shows that even in a single hospital with a focus on patients having access to um, genomic diagnostic testing, outcome disparities remain significant across cancer types. However, race is not always reported or recorded in the real-world cancer cohorts. Moreover, recent admixture of the human population, um, it has resulted in a continuum of human, human populations that cannot be clearly separated into discrete groups. As, as shown in this, um, Showing this um, uh, principal component analysis of, uh, of 1,000 genome samples, you can see that um, most of these, um, most of the African American and the Latin American populations, they have varying degrees of um, Native American, African, and the European ancestry in that single population. Although self-identified race and ethnicity information can can be an indicator of um, self-identified. Um, um, uh, indicator that um, indicates um, patients from a shared different, uh, sh uh, patients share a similar culture, share similar, share similar lifestyle or environmental exposures. Um, it uh, ignores the underlying genetic heterogeneity within the population. Next generation sequencing of known cancer genes has emerged as a common diagnostic tool to identify actionable mutations. However, target sequencing technology is not always 100% efficient and end up sequencing random DNA fragments outside the target region. And we have developed methods to translate these off-target rates into rich information about genetic ancestry. And we um, benchmark the performance of our ancestry inference methods, and we confirmed that we can accurately resolve genetic ancestry from tumor-only panel sequencing compared to normal sequencing. Oops. Sorry. 
compared to normal sequencing and compared to whole genome sequencing. And it's worth mentioning that um, most um, real-world clinical sequencing cohort do not have match normal sequenced. And this approach is not platform dependent, meaning that we can um, precisely uh, infer ancestry um, um, across different platforms. So this leads to the first part of my talk, where we use the panel sequencing to review ancestor-associated somatic alterations in cancer, in lung cancer. So lung cancer is the most common cancer type in both women and men. In lung cancer, we know that germline EGFR T790M allele increases the risk of developing EGFR mutant lung cancer, mutations in uh, EGFR mutations, specifically in lung cancer. And this is identified through studying several lung cancer families. On the other hand, many lung cancer risk loci has been identified um, through genome-wide um, uh, associated studies with relatively smaller fact sizes. Lung endocarcinoma is the most common sub subtype of lung cancer, which is typically driven by somatic alterations in the receptor tyrant's kinase RAS and RAF pathway. And it is well known that um, the mutation frequency in EGFR is much higher in the East Asian patients, which is around 45%. And this is much higher compared to the European patients, which is only 10%. And if you look at uh, the Latin American countries, um, the mutation frequency, EGFR mutation frequency, ranges from 14% in Argentina to uh, 25 uh, to 35% um, in Mexico, Colombia, and the Brazil, and about 51% in Peru. Despite the differences, um, it remains unknown whether these uh, somatic differences between populations are due to ancestry-specific germline influence or rather to ancestry-specific environmental exposures. And this is particularly interesting because Native American ancestry is present to varying degrees in modern uh, Latin American populations. And the mutation frequency of EGFR, EGFR seems tracks the proportion of uh, Native American ancestry in these populations. And it's worth mentioning that um, the Native American ancestry uh, inherits um, a significant component of East Asian ancestry um, that was derived through waves of migrations across the Bering Land Bridge about uh, 15,000 years ago. And therefore, um, the East Asian population and uh, Native American ancestry shares a significant uh, component of uh, germline alleles and provides a very really valuable resources to study ancestry associate, association with cancer. So in the collaboration with uh, the Latin American Consortium for the Investigation of Lung Cancer, we collected FFP tumor DNA uh, from over 1,000 lung cancer cases um, as part of the routine clinical care um, at two major institutions in Mexico and Colombia, respectively. And this includes over 500 um, self-reported never smokers. And then we used the Dana Farber's um, clinical panel sequencing, onco panel to identify somatic mutations and infer genetic ancestry at the, at the same time. This cohort is probably the largest lung cancer cohort focusing on a population with a mixed ancestry to date. And moreover, focusing on patients from one country will help us reduce potential confounding factors, uh, for example, the quality of health care and the access to genetic testing. So having obtained um, both genetic ancestry and uh, somatic data, we use the multivariant regression model to look for um, ancestry and gene associations, controlling for self-reported smoking status and uh, country of sample collection. And we found a significant anti-correlation with tumor mutation burden, uh, mutations in KRAS and STK11 uh, with Native American ancestry. And Native American ancestry was only positively correlated with EGFR mutations. And all these somatic features were independently associated with the, uh, the Native American ancestry in a joint model. So 
hope, hope I could um, convince you that uh, if you look at um, the, these two plots here, the EGFR mutation frequency increase with the percentage of uh, Native American ancestry in those individuals. And if the, when, the, um, when there's um, close to 100% Native American ancestry in these individuals, the EGFR mutation frequency is close to what we observed in East Asian populations. And to better understand the relationship of ancestry and exposure-induced mutagenesis, we investigated on mutational signatures. And we found that KRAS correlates with increased smoking-related signatures. And the association of EGFR remains significant, accounting for smoking signature, and is also significant in never smokers. And the association with KRAS in never smokers trended toward significant, but it's not significant in this cohort, perhaps due to limited sample size. So we therefore tested if smoking-related mutational signature modified the effect of ancestry on KRAS mutation. So in this model, we added the, the interaction of uh, Native American ancestry and the smoking signature, and this interaction term is not significant in this joint model, suggesting that the observed ancestry effect on KRAS is not dependent on smoking-related mutational process for KRAS. Together, we conclude that um, the Native American ancestry was associated with EGFR and KRAS in Latin American lung cancers that, have, that, that, that are independent to smoking-related activities. So the next question we want you to understand is uh, the cause of these ancestry-associated somatic differences. Similar to race, Global ancestry estimates an individual's entire genome, and these can also correlate with non-genetic uh, non -genetic factors, for example, um, population-specific exposures. Well, on the other hand, ancestry can be estimated at each locus. And as shown in this, um, um, this plot here, you can see that um, we can assign different ancestry to each genomic region across the genome, and we call this uh, local ancestry ident identification. And we, we found that we can also accurately infer local ancestry or local specific ancestry from tumor-only panel sequencing based on off-target rates. And this is very encouraging because Local ancestry or local specific ancestry is not causally associated with non-genetic factors, and therefore we can actually use local ancestry to infer the heritability of these ancestry-associated somatic changes. So using local ancestry, we try to identify loci associated with EGFR or KRAS mutations, and here we performed a multivariant logistic, logistic regression um, of uh, Native American ancestry for each genomic region, um, but as shown in this uh, QQ, as shown in this uh, QQ plus here, um, there's um, uh, we did not find any region uh, reach the genome-wide significance. So we next evaluated whether uh, multiple sub-threshold regions might be associated with uh, the phenotype. And to do this, we constructed a local ancestry risk score, which is conceptually similar to um, polygenic risk score, but here we leverage local ancestry to qualify the phenotypic heritability. And I won't go through all the details here, but uh, when we put the local ancestry risk score and global ancestry together in this model, we found that EGFR and the KRS, um, they, they were both associated with local ancestry, but, not, but no longer associated with the global ancestry, suggesting that um, germline or population-specific germline variants, rather than uh, environmental exposures, um, may modulate the risk of um, developing EGFR or KRAS mutant lung cancers in the Latin American populations. Just to summarize this part, we can use off-target rates from tumor-only panel sequencing to infer both global and the local ancestry, and we, um, this uh, allows us to identify somatic 
mutation specific to uh, the Latin American populations. And I hope that these results can improve the lung cancer diagnostic testing for that population, especially when the Hispanic, Hispanic population in the US is least likely to be tested for EGFR mutations compared to other populations. And we are, the next step for this project, we are accumulating more uh, samples to increase our sample size, uh, hoping that we can um, identify, pinpoint to the risk uh, allele um, through admission mapping analysis to identify um, germline variants associated with um, EGFR and KRAS. So in the next part of this talk, I'd like to introduce some of our recent efforts in understanding the interplay between genetic ancestry, somatic alteration, and the clinical outcome. And this work is in close collaboration with Sasha Gusev, Adina Farber, and Justin Newburn at Foundation Medicine, and a lot of work is done by Tommy in my lab. So in our earlier effort, we performed global and glo uh, global and local ancestry identification for TCGA samples. Although the sample size for non-European samples in TCGA is very limited, we were still able to identify several ancestry associated to somatic mutations. For example, we found uh, loss of EHL and uh, uh, chromosome 3P deletion uh, that were uh, less common in renal cell carcinoma patients with African ancestry. We then tapped into a much larger real-world sequencing cohort um, of tumors. Um, so here, uh, in collaboration with Foundation Medicine, we inferred ancestry on their panel sequencing database with over 300,000 samples, tumor-only samples. And none of these samples have, uh, have self-reported race or ethnicity information. And what we found that, again, although most of the samples are from European ancestry, there are a lot of samples with non-European ancestries. For example, only 10% of the samples um, we found with uh, African ancestry, but the number is big. The number is over 30,000, making it one of the largest oncology cohort of African ancestry across different cancer types. And our ancestry inference effort allows the inclusion of diverse populations that would be otherwise ignored um, due to lack of reported race and provided substantial statistical power to identify new ancestry associate genes. So um, based on the foundation cohort, we have uh, found many ancestry, ancestry and gene associations and we then used the um, uh, in collaboration with ACR Project Genie, we investigated on um, whether these ancestry-associated genes um, can um, affect outcome and can explain outcome differences between populations. And the Genie cohort integrates um, highly detailed clinical information together with somatic data. Really, uh, also they, uh, there are a lot of non-European samples in the cohort, and all together, this really help us to uh, perform this kind of um, analysis. So in this talk, I will highlight some, um, some uh, examples in our preliminary findings. As I mentioned earlier, lots of functional mutations in VHL and the PBRM1 um, less, like, significantly less frequent in renal cell carcinoma patients with African ancestry. And uh, based on the foundation cohort, we confirmed that this association and identified an enrichment of um, loss of function mutations in NF2 in um, um, samples with African ancestry. Even though NF2 is um, more common in non-clear cell subtype, and the non-clear cell subtype is more common in uh, black patients that is uh, already known, um, but this uh, NF2 and African ancestry association remains significant uh, even after adjusting for um, renal cell subtype. And moreover, in this um, Cox proportional, multivariant Cox proportional Heidler's model, uh, we found that um, NF, NF2 mutations and African ancestry, they were independently associated with worse outcome, accounting for different subtypes. This suggests that uh, men have mutations can at least partially explain outcome differences between populations. 
However, if you look at samples across the different Gini platforms, it's not a secret that false positive rate in detecting somatic mutations from tumor-only panel sequencing is higher than match normal tumor and match normal sequencing. And this affects non-European patients even more. This is because it is harder to filter out, filter out population-specific germline variants um, because non-European samples um, underrepresented in um, most um, um, reference sequencing databases. And this is particularly important for calculating tumor motion burden uh, for non-European patients. Indeed, we found um, that um, TMB inflation um, from tumor-only sequencing is much higher in Asian and black patients compared to their white counterparts. So to address this problem, Sasha's group, Adina Farber, um, used samples from the TCGA with match normal sequencing and they match ancestry and performed TMB recalibration within that ancestry group. And these uh, TMB recalibration methods really improved um, TMB from tumor-only sequencing as benchmarked by um, comparing recalibrated TMB versus tumor normal TMB from same patients in MSK impact cohort. And here is the analysis from the um, MSK impact lung cancer cohort where we show that um, the tumor only TMB um, inflation, inflated tumor only TMB really um, did not associate with um, immunotherapy outcome and recalibrate TMB um, actually helped um, correct these, uh, actually corrected those mislabeled samples and improved the uh, immunotherapy outcome prediction. Overall, our work suggests that TMB calculation for tumor-only samples should be adjusted based on genetic ancestry. To summarize, um, Ancestral analysis in large-scale clinical genetic data sets really provides insights into the influence of ancestry associated genes on clinical outcome. And there's a need to develop somatic detection methods accounting for genetic ancestry where match normal data is not available. And for the ongoing, for the future direction, we will explore potential environmental mediators and include, for example, behavior and the lifestyle data in our models, possibly through electronic health records. And we will also explore germline variants associated with clinical outcome using real world data. In fact, using MSK impact, we found that um, based on off-target risk, we can infer accurately infer germline haplotypes, and this really allows us to bring together germline, somatic, and clinical data together. And finally, it is important to expand our research outside um, patients from uh, North America to better understand as ancestry and outcome. I'd like to acknowledge people in my lab and my colleagues at MSK, my previous colleagues and now collaborators in Dana Farber and our clinical collaborators in uh, Mexico and Colombia and the Foundation Medicine. And uh, as all junior faculty would do, I use this opportunity to recruit postdocs. So if you know, if you are interested in our research and if you know anyone who would be, would be interested in our research, please contact me and thank you for your attention. Uh, please walk up to the microphone if you have any questions. I think we have time for a couple. Um, we do have several online, so maybe I'll start there. Um, this is kind of a technical question. Uh, given that you use off-target reads to infer ancestry, is there a theoretical possibility that a targeted panel could be too efficient, not leaving enough uh, off-target reads for the inference? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so our benchmarking suggests that um, even at a point X coverage, um, you know, off-target risk coverage average 0.1x, we can still infer accurate uh, genetic ancestry. 
and most of um, the panels that we work with is, is around 0.5x. And at MSK, it's even better because we have two random match normal and we actually merge you know, multiple BAM files from the same patient and increase the off-target risk coverage. So, um, yeah, so it, we, we found actually, based on off-target risk, the accuracy is very consistent across the platforms. Okay. Um. You said there may be more population-specific false positives in somatic due to population frequency. Do these get over-classified in germline as well, possibly as VUS? Over-classified as um, germline, meaning that they actually... In germline, so over-classified. Yeah, I'm not sure if I follow the question either, but... Yeah, I, I definitely think, you know, since we can really sufficiently uh, filter out a lot of rare, um, actually probably not rare in certain population, but population specific germline variants that really um, contaminates a lot of somatic coding. Um, so we tried our best to um, you know, adjust uh, TMB based on ancestry, but actually one of the ongoing work in the lab is um, to actually look at local ancestry if um, we can, uh, for you know, patients with mixed ancestries, we can actually uh, improve, improve the resolution for detecting somatic mutations um, by looking at the location of the mutation in different local ancestry region. Um, so, so sort of taking mm -hmm. into account in the, uh, taking into account local ancestry when calling somatic mutations from tumor-only DNA. Very cool. Um, there's a few more online questions, but I think we probably have to keep moving. Um, so uh, we have next up. Um, a gold vendor showcase from Applied Spectral Imaging. Yes, thanks again to our invited speaker.